A lot of the neuroscience major actually, you spend a lot of time talking about brains, but you never actually get to see one and handle one close up. You have the opportunity to get excited about making connections between this organ sitting in your head and the human experience. In lab, we've been working with sheep's brains, which are a lot smaller, and even though they have a lot of overall similarities, some of the particular structures are different, obviously, because we're a little smarter than sheep. The way we started was we looked at just the outside of the brain um, and all the external features, and then we cut it mid-sagitally, and then we looked at all the internal structures there. And then the next week we did horizontal and frontal cuts, so we cut along these axes and then these as well. The goal was to implement more inquiry-based and experimentally-based uh, lab activities into multiple courses in the neuroscience curriculum. After we have uh, the students go through their sheep brain dissection, we travel over to the Geisel School of Medicine into the human gross anatomy lab and the students have the opportunity to dissect a human brain. And that's what we'll be dissecting today. Um, does anybody have any questions before we go in? What's really great about that is that they have seen a lot of the same structures on the sheep, but they're seeing them again on the human and are able to draw these connections across these different species and learn more about the anatomy by seeing it in these two different circumstances. Where does white matter tends? It's, it's like where these tracks And, you know, when you first look at it and you're holding it in your hands, you're just thinking, oh my god. This was someone's personality. This was like the entirety of somebody. I actually appreciate that they don't try to sort of baby you into, okay, now be careful, don't touch this, don't touch that. It's really more just get into it. If you mess up, that's all right. We'll talk about it. We'll see what you did. But I think that sort of that process where they're, they're there to help. So you, if you have questions, what structure is this? What am I looking at? Did I do this right? They're more than happy to help you and explain these things. But it's really an experiential learning class where they're expecting that you are going to make these discoveries on your own. And anterior lobe are both a fair answer. Inquiry-based learning involves students asking questions about their material and seeking out information on their own in order to kind of discover new things and make connections on their own. It's a challenge. Obviously, you cut open a brain and everything's sort of gray and white, whereas in a textbook or in a lecture, everything's color-coded and labeled, and you know, real brains don't look like that. But with the help of Eric and Nicole, who are the lab leaders, it was really not so bad to spot things. Awesome for you, for you, Jenny. Yep. And it's going to go down. We had a lab experience where the students worked with these physiological recording kits called the iWorks kits. These kits allowed students to have the opportunity to record different physiological measurements from themselves and their fellow classmates. And these are electrical recordings of the brain or your muscles, respectively. Brain waves city, baby. <laughs> They also have the opportunity to use these kits to learn more about how the brain controls your muscles by actually stimulating muscles and seeing responses in your limbs without actually having that response be driven by your own brain. The inquiry part is they're going to have to work with kind of what we've given them in terms of approaches and experience and start asking questions and then collect the information and interpret it. Right, kind of like goes like that. For me, I think the reason why I love neuroscience so much is because it explains the world where you're starting to grapple with the understanding of how you as a person work and how your projections of how you perceive the world work. So being able to place that in physical structures and say, that all of these questions that I have are seated in this one place that I've been talking about for a really long time, but now I can actually explain and, and talk to someone about in a physical context has been really invaluable.